So here we are at the AMC 6 in Burbank, getting ready to watch Hillary's America. And look who come! Look who happens to be in the neighborhood. Hi, do you have any movies that are showing about? Uh, do you have any movies about politics or anything? Uh, we might have one. Oh. There might you might just be in the right place we for told one. Brian we were going to go see Brad Moss, but. Oh. <laughs> Do you have a movie showing that kind of um, attacks everything I've ever stood for as an adult person? We no, this does not attack everything you've ever stood for, <laughs> trust me. Okay. Maybe only a few things. Yeah, and maybe not so much attack, but more like clarify. Oh, clarity. We're into clarity tonight. Okay, clarity so, it is. So tonight, thank you, Brian, for joining John, Jennifer you. and I thank to you. come see Hillary's America. We're going to have fun. Yeah, and, <laughs> and guess what? Right over here, we've got your booty. We've got the large popcorn, the uh, mm, Sprite, mm. and then the hot dog, and then a Diet Coke for my buddy, my pal, Jennifer. And so we're excited. Getting ready to see the movie. Thank, Thank you, you so this. much. Looking you forward to it. And, I don't uh, need Twizzlers. Yeah, he, he, he balked on the Twizzlers. <laughs> Twizzlers got I know you have a full day. Um, uh, actually, you'd every be wrong. Day of your uh, life. Actually, you'd be wrong. Given the enthusiasm with which you regard my radio uh, time, I'd like to hire you as my PR agent. It's the person that you know talks up what your... Uh, your your show or your career or whatever to I've, other people and I've gets, had, uh, opens doors. Could yeah. you be my door opener? Could well, you, could you take my career into a whole new level? Well, considering Would the you? fantastic bang-up job I've done with my own public <laughs> image. <laughs> Give it me. Oh, okay. All right, when I... So one, one of those weeks, you're just, where is she? You know, you're gone. <laughs> so Don has to be here for a week. And he, like, lived here. He got an Airbnb in Glendale. I believe he fell in love with the Italian woman while I was <laughs> Maybe. It I was a romance, he, and the movie's coming this fall. He said to me, quite seriously. In a world. In a world where the conservatism <laughs> of Don Dix is tortured by the figure <laughs> of a modern-day Sophia Loren. <laughs> Airbnb. He said when he walked through the house, Jennifer, yeah. he could smell like casseroles. No. I tell See, you. See, that's, well, that's because she's cooking. You always check the box. Whole house rental. That's what I always do. There's a whole house. It was just so nasty. What? I guess I have to say this again. But it's always the voice of reason, the man who gets it right when it comes to decency, standards, and morals. Don Dix is always the guy. <laughs> he rents an Airbnb in Glendale. There's this Italian lady in there cooking manicotti or whatever she had going on all week. Hey, uh, Mr. Don Dix, I hear you talking about the caravan of migrants. Oh, no. And he's going through the house, and he's smelling and loving the fettuccine. I know that he was attracted to her. I, know, I just know it. And he existed in a spare room. Yeah. Like a human being and a civilized man. They shared a bathroom. They did not. Why can't Jennifer Horn do that? I wouldn't do it. Brian is our lovable liberal. Welcome to The Answer. Friday, finally a Friday. Don Dix on the trumpet or the horn there introducing that the song stage. song makes me want to play the saxophone. It makes me want to end voter fraud in this nation and go to Larry Elder on the morning. Answer. No, this is no. This is your, this is your career. You're a broadcast professional. You've been doing this all your life. For me, I keep it telling was, them that and they say, well, <laughs> we need paperwork to prove it. <laughs> but for me, it was it was a doorway that opened up so that it would um, advance the uh, body politic. The, you know, the, the, the whole idea of, you know, just reengaging a citizenry in the political um, process. Don Dix in for Jennifer Horn on a Friday morning answer. Very encouraging. You say, you know. My agent used to say to me, you know, Brian, when one door closes, another one's locked. And and <laughs> you need to understand that. how we met. First time I saw you, because I remember that day, you approached me at a live broadcast and you were uh, advocating you had literature for me. I recall that. Remember? at uh, I guess not. Wasn't it at the food lab? Uh, no, it was uh, at uh, Heroes. Wasn't it at Heroes? Uh, in oh, 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 that right? one. Yes, that yeah. one. I forget what the it's, issue was. It's always huge. Whatever it's I always huge. He's Trump. for. It's always huge. I <laughs> it's mean, always it, huge. I don't recall exactly. Food, but huge. it was huge. I mean, it definitely was. It's going to be big. So then Don got in his uh, fast-moving vehicle of success. And here we are in 2020. And Don is not the Don who came to the table. Uh, Aww, uh, how nice Don, of you. Oh, <laughs> Well, then you should wait a few moments. No, you've changed. <laughs> you've changed a little bit because you were that very nice, and you're the best guy. I would only. I love you so much. But we were about to go back on the air, and uh, I heard Don remotely broadcasting from home because nobody, but nobody, gets near COVID. Boy, mm. I'm Brian Whitman. That's a public That's right. service announcement. I heard Don go ah, 
And I looked at the screen. I thought he had caught maybe COVID or something. I looked at the screen. I said, what happened, Don? And he said this. Ah, I, I, I can't do it. I thought he was having a talent fit like I've had here sometimes. He said, I can't, I, I can't do it. I said, Don, you, you can't do what? He said, and, and I quote, I have 60 seconds. I can't eat my biscotti and clear the crumbs from my teeth in 60. Ah! And he tossed a biscotti, I believe a new one. It was $17 at a gourmet. And he threw it, it across. Can't be done. And I said, could you get Don? Uh, who's broken into Don's home studio? Could you put Don? But, uh, and, it, I, and I said, you've become Rick Dees. You become the legendary. I can't do that. I can't have a scone when Madonna stops singing in thirty seconds. Gosh, I can't so, do it. So if we're interfering, you know, I can't do it. If we're if we're if we're interfering with Operation Biscotti, uh, as he sips a gourmet fine coffee, Don, what happened to you with the with the with the glasses, the MSNBC? What, what's going on? Well, what happened to me is that 20 years of looking at computer monitors have decayed my vision to the point to where I need two and a half, but point, I, I two point the, five helpers. But Don, I met to a, see you clearly. Well, I'm getting bigger for you, so I'm trying to help <laughs> that out. Okay. I don't know. I just no. I'm not even going to go there. I'm yeah. not going to spoil the fun. You, no. I, there are people that are in love with the whole Disneyland experience. I not so much. Don Dix taking a firm stance against Mickey Mouse here on The Morning Answer. Oh, Don, you want to take this outside, pal? Because them's fighting words, muchacho. Donald, not, Mickey, whoever you're not now. And put the mask on. Well, I, I have no droplets. I'm not human. I'm made of plastic. Don't say that out loud. They told you to never say you don't have blood. I, I'm plastic. Let's roll, Don. Let's throw down. You shouldn't talk that way, Don, about Mickey, because he will throw down. Mr. Mouse, I'll see you in the alley. Ho, 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 oh, some fighting words, Polly. Uh, when we talk about Schiff, Jennifer says he doesn't even live in Glendale. I can't think that's true because don't you have to live in the district to be a congressperson? Of course you have to, right? I mean, I, when, uh, no, Don, no, please keep it no, down. You don't have to live in the district. Mm -hmm. You don't. You and don't. it's a major stumbling block for um, no one. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a little like Wild Kingdom. I'll stay in the Jeep while Jim goes down and wrestles the giant anaconda. That's right. We're going to go right down to Glen Oaks. We understand it. Congressman Adam Schiff calls this his primary residence. All right. We're going to creep up right on the doorbell here. <laughs> There's no doorbell. In fact, this door looks like it hasn't been open in 17 years. Hello? And there he comes, out from the back. He looks like a giant lizard, walking right to the front door. Adam Schiff, my gosh, he's home. But I thought he didn't even live here, and you got to watch out for him. You turn your back on him, and he'll get you. What, he, what kind of a creature is Schiff? You Schiff said, like is, a lizard? Yeah, Schiff is sort of an international anomaly. You look at him, you got that long neck, sort of like a turtle, so he can reach out and... Brown nose people to get fundraising dollars. Belly crawling. The belly crawler right there at the bottom of the pond. And I was taking out the crocodile hunter by for some stingrays. What a tragedy. And it was. But nothing quite like Adam Schiff. That guy, oh, he's a real leech. He'll get on you. It's a parasitic relationship with the people of Glenville. So I watched that Prop 22 very closely because I became the liege of Lyft after I abdicated the throne at Uber. Don Dix, you have been watching California propositions all night. Can you start from 14 to 25 and just give us a real quick rundown and as to where we stand? And don't take any breaths in between. Go. <laughs> Proposition 14 is winning it. 51 to 48 percent. 15 losing as we Good wanted. <laughs> 40, 51 to 48. Proposition 16, the affirmative action proposition, is losing. Expanding government authority on rent control. Nobody wants rent control. That one lost 59% to 40%. Wait, wait, wait. The things you hear on talk radio. Imagine you just got in the car. You turn on. You hear a guy say, nobody wants rent control. <laughs> nobody. I can introduce you to a few <laughs> renters that might take issue with that, Tom. But you're right. Hey, look. The result is it got defeated. It, did it got defeated. defeated. Right. All right, and uh, your app, your app uh, proposition, the one that lets you continue to have your Uber or Lyft driver, uh, be curious to find out which one you prefer sometime. Uh, not right now. Yes, on 22. <laughs> that one won 58 to 41 percent. 23, state requirements for kidney dialysis crisis uh, clinic, 64 <laughs> percent. 
uh, losing to 36%. Everybody wants to make sure they got a kidney dialysis location close to them. 24 <laughs> of many consumer <laughs> privacy losses, laws. That one adds a new layer of bureaucracy. People this apparently love awesome. bureaucracies. That one winning 96 <laughs> to 43. And then finally, oh. bail. Nobody wants criminals to get out without bail, so that one lost 55% to 44%. That's your rundown on the proposition. Well, Jennifer and I had a unique because we're looking at Don, we're all socially distanced because God knows what Don has. And I'm We can't be sure. Yeah. So, right. Uh, so we're looking at each other. And Don's so funny because he says about the prop, you know, for my Ubers or prop 22 <laughs> or whatever. He's on a phone. He's, and we see him in his glass. He looks like a million bucks. He's got the phone. And he says, Does he have uh, pants prop on 22 <laughs> on your apps. And then he says to me, and we're watching, he goes, I'd like to hear your opinion on that at some point. And then his eyes brighten as if he just said something <laughs> terrible because he hears in his mind's ear me taking 10 minutes to talk about the district and then he goes so the eyes go oh, as if electrocuted and he goes not now you know and so jen and i fall Please, out laughing anything I but now. Don, bless you i love you thank you for the best laugh of my morning